So if you look here on your screen, go watch <laughs> the uh, Rings of Power TV show trailer that I'm going to explain to you why this show failed and how it can improve, if it can improve. And uh, <laughs> man, this is going to be funny. This video is. The first shot of this dude. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of elf is this? Man? He's supposed to be an elf. Elf is supposed to be like tough and immortal. And this guy is like, ah. <laughs> and we got this chick. Oh, Ladriel. I have a lot of fun. But, uh, character is terrible in this show. And this is what I'm going to go into the season two thing. The only way this can improve is if they give her a serious rewrite. And then I go back to the drawing board and I'm not seeing recast, but definitely get some competent writers in the room and remember what she is supposed to be, like in the movies, spot on. This show, don't recognize the character at all. So this show is really gonna keep going. I need to seriously rewrite this character. Give yeah, this chick some active lessons. And uh, let's drop the freaking. I mean, you got the rings of power already. One for three for the elves, seven for dwarves, and nine for men. Well, I've been saying this for a while. I think the only way this show can really get back on its feet is if they focus on the nine before they became rewrites. Because you know, the only thing that really doesn't make sense to me in this show, the whole show is terrible. But the thing that doesn't really work for me is the timeline. And there's no sense of how much time has passed in the second age. Because then they got little proto Gandalf floating around. The story wishes don't show up in Middle Earth till Third Age. Third Age this is the second. It's way too early. We have to have a run around without a staff and stuff. What are you doing, man? Yeah. It could have been anybody. What do you have to be Gandalf for? Why? I mean, the only positive I can really say is that the, uh, the visuals are pretty good. The set pieces, production value is decent. Uh, this is funny. <laughs> the world should wear an armor for. <laughs> no, please stop. Just stop. Making me laugh. Oh my goodness. So we went from Galadriel to trying to make a Xena warrior princess, except Xena wasn't wearing no damn armor. She was almost based on butt ass naked, which is probably <laughs> speaking of someone who watched the show back in the day. Yeah. 
that's another one. I really do watch that because it was based on what I was making. <laughs> it's like it's like they're afraid to make this chick feminine, which is a problem that I've noticed a lot in the media these days. Now, granted, gaming's games to me just don't really matter as much as far as like femininity because they're a bunch of pixels on the screen. So when people start crying about Star Wars Outlaws character, I'm like, yeah, pixels, a bunch of pixels on the screen. <laughs> now, Laura Croft back in the day was a badass feminine piece of ass. Today, the newer two rare games, she's just a whiny little brat. That's exactly what this philandry one is. She's a whiny brat who stamps her feet until she gets what she wants, which is what you'll see a lot of in the present day. <laughs> Unfortunately, but it's true, and I've already witnessed that even for myself in society. A lot of broads today just seem to seem feminine. You can't be barking orders and still be feminine. You can't. <laughs> So I was like, her using a sword to me is stupid. She should at least have a bow. That was a way better with bows than there were swords. I had never seen Laylos use no damn swords. Maybe his little daggers. But he had never used no swords. <laughs> it was like seeing a dwarf using a sword to have an axe. And we got the seal door apparently. So here's the problem with the seal door, right? He can't be alive in the Fellowship of the Ring. Because it's. No, a seal door is son of the king. Yeah, seal door is the one that cut off Sauron's hand. So this can't be the same guy. He's a human. Is that an elf? Listen, you got this uh, kid with the same exact name, which is stupid, by the way. It can't be him. So I was like, this is a problem. And then like, apparently, what the hell was this kid's name? I don't remember. So I was just trying to block the show from my memory because it's just so bad. It's like... <laughs> Uh, is this really even getting a second season? Because Nothing. I ain't seeing nothing over here. Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> Listen to the critical drinker for a minute here. way back in, I think, September, October of last year. Now, we, we still haven't seen anything even resembling a trailer, and there's no mm -hmm. indication of when it's going to come out. And it's fueling rumors that the season has been delayed. They're probably going to make the argument that it was because of the strikes and so on, but it wasn't because they were able to wrap filming successfully. They got everything that they needed. And the 
the current crop of rumors that are now doing the rounds is that uh, they are actually going to reshoot large portions of this and remake it. Uh, the showrunners, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, have apparently been demoted in the interim. Like between seasons one and two, they've been demoted um, from showrunners to like consulting producers or whatever the ridiculous Two-balls. term is. Yeah, it, pretty much. Um, and so the question mark that's hanging over this show now is, what are they going to do with it? Uh, are they going to delay it? Are they going to like try and salvage something from this show? Um, because everything that we're hearing so far just um, leaves a, a giant question over what is even going on with it. This is a billion dollar show, everyone. From what I remember, season one came out in September of 2022. So I don't know if they are going to effectively just hold it until roughly the same time for each year of release. That might just be the simplest explanation is that that's the release window they've got down because that's the one they went with last time and the market research told them that that would have been the best time to do it. Um, but against that, you can find interviews where they say that they it, think it's very important that we have as minimal a gap between seasons as possible. So speed is, is of the essence. Um, and if they've already finished filming, then yeah, waiting for September, if you also want to be quick, doesn't really add up. Um, I don't know. I, I've not seen very much about this, except that I keep an eye on the analytics for my Rings of Power videos. And so when they start ticking up again, because Amazon is spending hundreds of millions of pounds on YouTube advertisements, then I'll know it's coming. It's like getting it in the real <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I ask about this because, yeah, there seems to be rumours during the rounds that... Uh, this season has been a troubled one. And they kind of recognize the problems that they had with the first season and they're trying to correct it because the backlash that we saw to season one was immense. And it was kind of admirable in a lot of ways because you can't even make the argument really that it was a divisive show. It seems like pretty much everyone thought it was garbage. And so it almost united the Lord of the Rings fandom in their their condemnation of it. We covered someone who loved it apparently, right? We heard the every in, in encompassing their entire praise of the show. They were like, CG, wow, that was great. The CG was so good. Special effects, <laughs> yes, CG. That's great. Yeah. yeah, so it's great. <laughs> we were like, oh, <laughs> CG. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the writing? Like, no. <laughs> because we've, we've had trailers for season two of. Um, Oh, House of the Dragon. Sorry, the name escaped me there. So, it just, um, you've essentially got two shows that are roughly contemporary with each other, but one seems to have progressed so much better than the other. And with a fraction of the publicity as well. I remember that's the nice thing about House of the Dragon season one is that it, it, it didn't come out of completely nowhere. I did see the occasional advertisement for it on the tube in London or on the television, but not very much, and I didn't know a huge amount about it. And it didn't seem to have a huge amount of fanfare when it did first launch. And obviously, coming off the back of the disaster of Game of Thrones season 8, had a lot of making up to do. But it made up for it almost immediately and then spread rapidly through word of mouth, which is always going to be way cheaper than Amazon's marketing budget is, um, which seems to be spent principally on trying to take down YouTube videos which are critical of your work. Uh, but it was nice to see the counterpoint. Here is a, a faithful and well-written fantasy adaptation, um, which had very little by way of support comparatively, and it's just blown up and everyone loves it. Versus Rings of Power, which comes out contemporaneously with loads of money, huge budgets, all the publicity, everything you ever order from Amazon has an advert for Rings of Power, and it's fucking shit. And it deserves the failure that it got. And so, the horse And the horse died. If they if they're sensible, they will they will take a look at House of the Dragon and try and learn what it was that made that quite as popular as it as it became. But they're not sensible because they're Amazon and they make much money. I think if you were if you were suddenly yeah if you were suddenly put in charge of this show um, coming into it with season two, like after the reception of season one, what could you potentially do to try and salvage this? Like, I feel like it's an unwinnable situation because the. The public perception of it is so negative. I don't know how you could redeem yourself in their in their eyes. There are two two ways you could. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say uh, the main way is to uh, raise the uh, subscription fee by three pounds to pay for the series. Oh, yeah, that'll be you could do that. Yeah. I think it's Amazon. Few. Amazon's I not think short of money. Uh, yeah, that's you the crazy do. thing. Yeah. 
you could do two ways. You could basically you could do it, um, and I think this is what they have to do because they they didn't scrap it and start over. Which is, that that option's gone. So they can either do if they're going to do it well, they would need to do it lower accurate. So you move forward and bearing in mind that the lower has already been trashed, but you kind of try to get it back on track and get it lower accurate, or you just take it off in its own direction and, and just it's, it's its own thing now. We're not even going to try to, to keep it accurate to Tolkien's world. It, it's just its own series, and we're going to write the way we want to write it. And if I was an Amazon, that's the way I would do it, because I think Humpty Dumpty's broken, you're not going to put them back together again. I think that's how it is with lower. So I would just make it its own show completely and write on the basis of what is uh, best. Yeah. Like, I, I think they really, 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 I, really struggled with that, in. because season, season one already effectively did that. Season one had the problem of attempting well it claims it sells itself on the basis that it is an adaptation of Tolkien's work but really it, it's not it it breaks it or it does already go off in its own direction and there is no way of pulling that back even as season two moves into areas where they have more of the rights to the backstory material but I will I sometimes think that that's not as big a deal as people like you and I probably think that it is because obviously you know if you're a fan of Tolkien lots of people on the internet lots of YouTubers are big fans we've read the books we've watched the films we know all this stuff we care about the lore but we're not I don't think the majority of viewers or even potential viewers for a Rings of Power show. Rings of Power season one didn't fail because, or just because, it did such a terrible job as an adaptation. It failed because it was tedious and badly written on its own terms, so even people with no familiarity with the lore had no reason to stick around, as I think only about 30% of them did. It, it, it's a bad show for all of the reasons. The lore breaks are pretty egregious, absolutely, but it's just a bad show as well because they have no ability to write a coherent script, and the actors are terrible, and the dialogue's embarrassing, and even if you did take it up in its own direction with no regard to the law, that's not going to change unless you completely change the backing team. Well, I think the important thing is to establish a creative framework. So, for example, one of the reasons season one failed, whereas, for example, The Lord of the Rings by Jackson succeeded, is because everyone knew what they were supposed to be doing. With Jackson's Lord of the Rings, his mission statement was quite simple. We just want to make it as accurate to the book as is cinematically possible, and we want to you know, make it for Tolkien. That's a very clear mission statement. It's a very clear uh, creative framework that everyone can understand. But Rings of Power is very confused. If you're involved in that production, you're not sure, is this supposed to be related to the books? Are we doing our own thing here? Everyone's kind of confused. And because there's no real creative framework there, you end up with just like an absolute mess. So for the, the writers, even even down to the production and the costume designers, what exactly are they working off? I think you before you do anything else, you first need to establish, is this, are we working from the text here or are we just doing our own thing? And everyone should know that so that they know exactly what they're supposed to do in the production. I think even if, even whether you're going to do your own thing or whether you're going to be slavishly devoted to the text as much as you can be, there's a general level of just basic quality that you would strive for, whether it's like something as simple as the costume design and actually making it seem like they're wearing real suits of armor um, or the writing of the characters, giving them dialogue that real, like, believable humans or, or whatever would actually say, um, or giving you a, a plot that unfolds in a, a way that seems logically consistent and emotionally and dramatically satisfying. Those are all things that you can do regardless of whether or not you're going to stick to the lore. It's just a basic level of, like, quality, I suppose, and they don't even adhere to that. And this is a, a show. the lead by saying, we're going to write the story that Tolkien never could. Yeah, <laughs> that went well. Yeah. And it just seemed natural that uh, this show, which is about a fantasy world, thousands of years before our own existence, should reflect the world that we live in today. <laughs> of course it should, yeah. Because the... Yeah, and right there is the crux of the problem of Rings of Power, that is too modern. And I said this about Disney Wars. Now, Disney Wars is way too modern. Like with uh, Disney Wars 7, the world looks way too clean for a movie supposed to be called Episode 7. And with Rings of Power, just everything about it is just wrong, as you've heard these gentlemen say. It disrespects the lore, it disrespects Tolkien, which is another problem in itself. But if you look at, I'm going to show you the Middle Earth games. Now the Middle Earth games, they take their own liberties as well. <coughs> as well. But it, 
It's established from the beginning that it does the whole thing. In the fires of Mount Doom, a ranger and a wraith bound together in the dark, craft the one thing that could challenge the dark world a ring of power. Power can blind those who seek it, and even the strongest bonds can be broken. The future I have seen cannot come to pass. Tell the bring more. So, like, as a fan of the Middle Earth games, I play them all the time. I think Mordor has a better story than War. War has better combat, I think. It's a really good strategy series, and it's unfortunate that we will not get any more of these titles. But uh, honestly, if I were in charge at Amazon with this Rings of Power stuff, first off, I'd change the title, and I would adapt Italian story on television. One, he's half human, half elf, half wraith. So that right there is cool in itself. And it has nothing to do with the movies. It's his own thing. It's set in Mordor, so you get tons of orcs and combat and whatnot. And uh it doesn't really it doesn't really break lore. I mean of course it does its own thing, it takes liberties. Like any adaptation does, but at least we'll have a freaking random dude as Sauron running around, or uh, Galadriel stamping her feet and uh, barking orders at dudes. What are you gonna do when I tell you or not? That's not Galadriel. <laughs> Was like, how is uh, how are two games made by WB better than this billion dollar television series? Like a uh, little platoon said in the Critical Drinker video I just played for you, Peter Jackson, when he made Lord of the Rings, went on, on video on record saying that we're not trying to put our identity politics into this into these movies. We're trying to do the best we can with the token rope. Of what's possible, what token wrote. Rings of Power is the exact opposite. So I'm like struggling to figure out what they can do to make season two watchable outside of like maybe clearly a hard reset is what's needed. Back to the writing, writing room. Get rid of that ridiculous side plot with the elves losing their immortality or some crap i'm like okay no <laughs> i just there's just so much wrong with this show and it's unfortunate because well not really unfortunate kind of a good thing i did not think this show ever needed to exist so i'm in the camp if i kind of don't care if the show gets canceled or not never needed to exist shouldn't exist and the fact that it does exist that I saw this season, which was terrible. I mean, the moment Hal Rand showed up, I'm like, Sauron. Sauron would be hiding in plain sight. He wouldn't be sitting on a throne somewhere in Condor or whatever. He'd be hiding in plain sight. And the first place he says he tells her to go is the freaking Southlands. Which is where Mordor is. That's a that's a huge red flag right there. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's obvious. Way too obvious to me. I'm like, they're looking for him at his palace or whatever. I'm like, he ain't gonna be at his palace, you idiots. <laughs> and if he was, what would they do? They couldn't even take on a cave troll until Galados saved their asses. It's like, this is probably the dumbest group of bells I've ever seen. 
That was pitiful. <laughs> Italian. This is beautiful. Where did you find it? I still have a few friends left over there. Past is the past. Nothing can be changed. We must leave this place. We can go. Life. It's too late. The Wraith calls to you. I call to you. Wraith! Wraith! Where are you? See so that clip right there was live action. Like, hello, that's your series right there. <laughs> this is Rachel Power crap. Well, this is your series right there. Cast freaking Toy Breaker Italian. You get someone's color rimbor. Get this stuff out there. Make a live action in the middle of Shadow of War TV series. Come on. Like, hello. It's like the only, the only thing that's going to happen when if Reigns of Power ever comes back, it's just going to get worse. Like, the only character that's decent to me is Iron Deer. And unfortunately, I don't think he really fits in the tone of that show. He just kind of feels out of place. Give him a spinoff and make him like an Italian type character. I want that day and night because that character is amazing to me. Like character kind of reminds me of Legolas a little bit. The only decent character to me in the show is Aaron Deer. And that busty mom that he's clearly banging. <laughs> I was like, all right, Aaron Deer. Then ran himself a skill money. Let's check out the comments here. Yeah, not that many. Now this this sequence is this sequence coming up is absolutely fantastic. And the, the exact reason why this needs to be adapted on television. They the shore is calling us. This is no longer our battle. I tried fighting you. Can't be done. Could you really rest for all of eternity, knowing that you had the chance to stop him, but did nothing? That line alone, 
I don't know how no one thought of, hey, we should make a, a Middle Earth Shut Off Mordor adaptation. Instead, let's just completely disrespect the legacy of Tolkien with this dopey Rings of Power series. That makes no sense. That's what I would do if I were in charge of Amazon Studios for this Rings of Power series that has failed horribly. Not even a hint of a season two trailer. I also don't even know if it's even happening. Apparently, it's been delayed, according to Hurdle Drinker. That's no video that I played for you. Shout out to Critical, Critical Drinker and uh, Mauler and all of them on the panel. Fellow Token fans, fellow geeks like myself. And uh, yeah, uh, this music is amazing, by the way. <laughs> Just listen to that music and tell me that you wouldn't want to see a live action Italian on your television screen. Or even a short film. I'll take a film, honestly, because Little Rings of Meat for film. That was another thing about Rings of Power Life. The Royal Rings of Meat for film. Same with Star Wars. I mean, Harry Potter could be put on television because you can always tell smaller stories in the Wizarding World. I think Fantastic Beasts should have been on television, not film. My Lord of the Rings is made for film. Star Wars is made for film. So, not having one in five years is ridiculous. Uh, if someone at that, in that boardroom was like, hey, let's scrap this stupid Rings of Power show and adapt those amazing Middle Earth games instead, I think we'll get a much better positive reception. But why would they do that? They can continue with this, the failure that this show has become. 